and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be starting another reading vlog for you guys. So I personally have not been doing too much reading over the last week and I think I can completely blame that on the, this one? Yes, this beast right here. I finished Chain of Thorns last Friday and it put me into maybe the biggest book hangover that I've ever had. But oh my god, on Saturday I was so sad that The Last Hours was finally over. I was just so sad in general that the prequel series of the Shadowhunters Chronicles had finally like come to their conclusion and I was like, I... this is so much pain. I will never read another book again because they, they just hurt me. Um, that's obviously not the case and I'm here filming a reading vlog so <laughs> clearly I was just being dramatic but I was like, it was not a good time. I was very sad. But... <laughs> That's not the point. I have not really picked up anything since Friday. I started a book yesterday, which I will talk about in a minute, but I'm back in the reading mood. I'm ready to read some good books, and that's what we're gonna do this weekend. So, I have quite the TBR. I don't know exactly how it's gonna go, but we'll just have to see. We'll see. Anyway, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna talk about the TBR. <laughs> so first up, I have a book that I am definitely aiming to start and finish this weekend, and that is Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. This is the Wyverns and Words book club pick for what month is it? February. <laughs> there we go. And our live show for it is next Saturday as I'm filming this, so I would like to have this just done read because as I'm sure a lot of you guys know, I always leave the books until the last possible minute, and I'm trying to not do that this year. So. Hopefully we'll be able to um, get through this. It doesn't seem like super long, so I think I think it'll be good. At any rate, I'm super excited about this. And I think it's gonna be such a good time. I saw, I think somebody said that this book kind of reminded them of Spirited Away. And I was like, okay, yeah, sure. Like, I don't think like exactly, but I think the vibes are there. And I'm very excited about that. But it has also made me really want to rewatch Spirited Away because I think I watched it for the first time in like, 2017 and I haven't watched it since so I'm definitely planning on doing that this weekend The only problem is normally I cannot watch Studio Ghibli movies because I don't have HBO Max However, thanks to the sponsor of today's video I will be able to watch it on Netflix and I'm so excited about it So yes, this video is being sponsored by NordVPN So thank you so much to them for supporting me and my content If you guys don't know what a VPN is, it basically stands for a virtual private network Basically you can use this VPN while you are online and you won't have to worry about any of your important information Such as passwords being obtained by hackers Personally, I as a very impatient person love NordVPN because they are the fastest VPN out there Meaning that you can visit any sites that you wish to visit or watch anything you want to watch with no buffering. They also block intrusive ads and web trackers, making sure that every file that you download will be safe for your computer. They also have tons of servers all over the world that you can connect to with just one click so you can access better internet speeds or my personal favorite use is that you can access other content that you may not have in your own country. And that is how I plan to watch Spirited Away this weekend, which I'm so excited about because if you guys don't know, different countries do have different Netflix libraries. Unfortunately, the US Netflix library does not have the Studio Ghibli movies that I'm looking for. However, I can simply connect to a server in the UK and I can access the UK Netflix library and they have all of the Studio Ghibli movies. It also allows me to watch so many of my other favorite TV shows and movies from other Netflix library such as Twilight, The Vampire Diaries, all the good stuff that is not on US Netflix. So NordVPN is just fantastic for being able to watch what you want when you want. It's also great because you can access it on up to six different devices so I can watch it on my phone, on my tablet, on my computer, basically anywhere I want to watch it. So if you guys would also like to try out NordVPN you can go to nordvpn.com slash reading to get the exclusive offer. Do not fret, it is completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee and that link will be listed in the description below. So thank you so much to NordVPN for sponsoring this video and we're just gonna get back into talking about my reading plans for the weekend. I also would really like to start and finish this book, which is A Curious Beginning by Deanna Rayborn. This is the first book in the Veronica Speedwell mystery series. The lovely Jane sent me this book last week and I have been so excited to continue it because I've actually read the first six chapters of this book because I checked it out from the library, I think in November, maybe? And I think I just got distracted and I never like picked it up again. However, I was really loving 
those first six chapters. So I've been meaning to get back into it. And this is the perfect excuse to get back into it. Definitely will be starting this. It follows our main character, Veronica, who um, solves mysteries with this dude named Stoker. I believe there's like a really good slow burn romance throughout the series. And it takes place in the 1880s in England. And I was like, the, the Victorian times? Like, yeah, I love books set in that period, so. Hopefully, I will also be loving this book. And then I actually have a book that I'm currently in the middle of. And this is actually my fifth, I think, reread of this book. And that is Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare, the first book in the Infernal Devices. I don't know if I have to tell you that, but in case you don't know. <laughs> I obviously love this book so much. One of my absolute favorite books of all time from one of my favorite series of all time. So I was, like I said, very sad that I finished Chain of Thorns and towards the end of reading that book, I was like, I should reread The Infernal Devices again. Yep, <laughs> that's what I should do because there are a ton of characters that are in The Infernal Devices that are like side characters or kind of just like background characters really in the last hours. And seeing them, like that little taste of them, I was like, oh, I miss them. I need to reread this book and probably the whole series. So I started listening to the audiobook yesterday just to kind of get myself back in the mood to do some reading. And I made it up to page 274 because I love this book so much. Uh, it's so easy for me to fall into it. And it was, I'm loving it so much. I also really wanted to read this book like pretty soon after I finished like the three books in the last hours because I really want to try and pinpoint which of these two series is my favorite so i want to give them like each a fair chance so i'm gonna read them around the same time and we will see however i think i already know the answer to that question <laughs> and i'm pretty sure it's still the infernal devices like i it's just these characters man i love them so much it's like i love them on like another level than i've ever loved like any characters like obviously i love and really do connect to the characters in the last hours but characters or something else I love oh they're all so great big fan <laughs> so I'm enjoying my reread of this book so much like it always just puts me in the best mood even though the series is rather sad over like in total but I'm still having a good time and then I also have one other book that I'm kind of aiming to start this weekend definitely not finish this weekend because this is a long one it's like almost 800 pages but I would maybe like to start The Well of Ascension by Brandon Sanderson. This is the second book in the Mistborn series and I love the first one so obviously I went out and I picked up copies of the second and third ones ASAP so I guess now is the time to read them. So I'd like to maybe start it just kind of see what's uh what's up with this one. We'll see though because I know this is quite the ambitious TBR already but What's another one? I also have a very exciting package that is coming sometime, maybe this weekend, maybe it's like early next week, but I will show you that in this vlog as well because I've never been so excited to get some books in my life. Like it was maybe one of the worst financial decisions I have ever made, but like you, got, like you gotta wait and see, it's so good. I also have something else to open and that is this letter. <laughs> This is from the lovely Cassandra. You know her, you love her. And she sent me some stuff from her Etsy shop that I've been very excited about. She told me she was making the Folk of the Air map and I was like, oh yeah, it's so good. I mean, I've already seen it. Like she showed it to me already and it's stunning, but I'm very excited to see it in person. I will link Cass's um, Etsy shop in the description. As always, you gotta go check it out. Wow, it's so cool. I love the Folk of the Air map so much. Like it always gets me so excited. She also sent me our little logos for Women's and Words, which is our book club. If you guys um, did not know, I'm just gonna assume you did, but she also sent me the sticker. I'm very excited to have all these. So obviously you gotta go check out Cass's Etsy shop. It's Oakleaf Arrow Studios, links in the description. <laughs> but um, yes, that's all the stuff that I had to talk to you about. So it is currently Friday afternoon at like two. I don't really have any plans for tonight. So it's just uh, me and my books as it always is. But I think I'm gonna start out by listening to my audiobook a little bit for Clockwork Angel. And I'm gonna like clean, you know, like do some desk organizing. Like these drawers, I don't even know what's going on in them anymore. So it's kind of, it's becoming overwhelming. So I definitely need to do a little bit of reorganizing, which I thought I could also show you guys that. So it's gonna be a pretty chill Friday night. I'm going to listen to my audiobook. I might start one of my other books as well. I don't know, we'll just have to see. 
Anyway, this intro's long enough, so we're just gonna get into it. now. I have indeed cleaned my desk and reorganized my drawers. It looks the exact same, but I know it's different and it's all that matters. But I have made a bit of progress in Clockwork Angel. I'm up to page 331. We got some good scenes in the time since I last talked to you. We got the, the holy water scene. Like, yeah. <laughs> and we got the Blackfriars Bridge scene, which I like the first part of that scene love the rest of it not so much but the first part is good i don't even specifically remember what happens at the end of this book like to be honest obviously as i'm reading it i'll be like oh yeah wait does mm, is that what happens no no i'm trying to i'm getting it mixed up with like things that happen at the end of clockwork prince so how do i not remember what happens at the end of this book i know what happens at the end of clockwork prince but i don't know oh i'm losing my mind anyway it doesn't matter because i'm gonna find out very soon so Yes, I'm honestly aiming to like finish this today. I think I have like a hundred. No, damn, this book is long. <laughs> I always forget how long these books are because they are like almost 500 pages, but it does not look like it's 500 pages. But, um, what was I saying? I don't know, literally just all thoughts go out of my head when I start talking about the Inferno Devices, <laughs> but. Right, I am gonna make some more progress in a minute because I think I've decided that I wanna go on a little like casual walk like maybe a long walk it sounds kind of nice since it's winter like going out on walks is definitely a lot harder because it's very cold here in the midwest but it's like 40 degrees outside today uh, in fahrenheit but it is very sunny so i think if i like if I wear the right clothes i think it'll be a really good temperature for a walk so i'm going to change into some warmer clothing and then i'm going to go on my walk which i'm very excited about because i don't think i've gotten out to go on a walk in months honestly like i went on a lot of walks in october mainly to see like the pretty leaves but then everything died and i know it still looks incredibly sad like all the trees are bare all the grass is dead it's just it's like not cute but i need to go outside and like do something come back i'll make dinner it'll just be really chill and i will hopefully finish clockwork angel tonight and maybe start i got my eyes on a curious beginning i'm thinking i'm gonna start that one so those are kind of my plans for the rest of the day, and I'm excited about them, so let's go. listen to three chapters of clockwork angel maybe so getting close to the end of the book i do think we're about to meet one of the most iconic characters in the shadow hunters series as a whole 
and that is Church the Cat. I love Church so much. At least I think we're gonna, I think they go get Church. It's not a big part of the plot, but I just love Church. I, he's just like an icon. I love that Jem is also a cat person and he saves the cat, so I'm excited for that. But it's 4.30 now and I do think I'm gonna go get myself another Diet Coke because I am thirsty. Should probably drink some water, um, but the Diet Coke, it comes first. I'll drink the water eventually. And yeah, I'm gonna go home, I'll make some dinner in a bit, I will finish Clockwork Angel, and it'll be, it'll be a chill night. Yeah, so, those are the plans. <laughs> So it is the next day. It is Saturday afternoon at like 1. Me and Cass did some reading sprints this morning, so I really haven't had a ton of time to update you guys so far. However, I do have big plans for the day. So first of all, actually, how do I want to? Yes, okay. First of all, I actually ended up finishing my reread of Clockwork Angel last night. Honestly, I don't know how I kind of forgot what happened at the end of this book. I didn't like fully forget because like as I started to read more, I was like, oh, Right, yes, okay, but at the point in time that I was like talking to you guys yesterday about it, I could not for the life of me remember what happened at the end of this book, but I do really like the end of this book, but it also like Will frustrates me so much at the end of this book. And like, obviously there's a bunch of reasons why, but I remember when I first read this book, I was like, why do people like this man? Like it gets better, but every time I reread it, I have to have a little bit of a laugh because it's just, <laughs> It's just kind of ridiculous. However, definitely will be continuing my reread of TID because, duh. <laughs> I'm not going to start Clockwork Prince in this vlog, but probably just like sometime throughout next week or maybe in my next weekend reading vlog. We'll just have to see. It'll happen very soon. And I'm so excited about it because there are so many good scenes in Clockwork Prince. So many of my favorite scenes. I have also started Six Crimson Cranes. I started this book a little bit last night and then I read a bunch of this like this morning and on our sprints. So I'm actually up to page 181. So I'm like almost halfway through the book, I'd say. And honestly, this is such an easy read. I feel like it's really easy to fall into it and I'm definitely really enjoying it. It's not gonna be like a five star or anything, but I'm really having a good time. I think the story is a lot of fun. I looked into it and it's actually inspired by, I think it's a fairy tale by Hans Christian Andersen. I think it's called, oh, what is it? It's something about, God, what is it? I looked it up earlier so I could tell you about it, but then I have forgotten what it's called. I just Googled it. It is based off of The Wild Swans by Hans Christian Andersen. And in that one, it follows a princess who is trying to rescue her brothers who have been turned into swans. I would assume by an evil queen. And in this one, it kind of takes that, but it also weaves in like Asian mythology throughout that as well. So in this book, you're following our main character whose six brothers have been turned into these six crimson cranes by an, an evil person within her life. And you're basically just spending the whole book trying to figure out how she is going to reverse this spell. I really like the writing in this because it's not very lyrical. It's not very flowery. However, it's just like nice writing to read, which is like my favorite kind of writing. I could absolutely see this being turned into a Ghibli movie. Like that is exactly what this book gives me, like major Ghibli vibes. Like if there was a Ghibli movie based off of this, I'd be like, yeah, that makes sense. And I'd love to see it because I feel like this would be so pretty if it were like animated. Oh, it'd be so gorgeous. Overall, it's really fun. I definitely think it's reading almost a bit like middle grade. Like the writing, it's very nice, but it is a bit like juvenile and the way that the story is being told, but I don't really mean that in a bad way. Like I'm definitely really enjoying this. I just don't really think it reads like YA. However, it's just like a really nice tale. Very much feels like you're reading a fairy tale. There's dragons in it as well. She has this little like, paper crane companion, which is also really fun. And I am just excited to read some more of this. So my goal is to finish this book up today, which may be a bit ambitious because I do have plans at like 5.30. So I don't think I'll be able to do much reading after that. However, I'm gonna aim to try and finish it before then. And I'm gonna feel so accomplished because this whole time that I've been reading this, I thought our live show was next week for some reason, but it's actually in two weeks. So I'm just like, if I finish this day, I'm gonna be so on top of my stuff and really aiming to finally be on top of my stuff for once. I think I'm going to take a minute to update. 
me and Cass are on FaceTime right now and she is showing me to her vlog even though she's still muted and I don't know what she's saying. <laughs> But um, I'll show, I'll make Cass say hi to you guys in a second. I'm going to spend a moment and update my reading journal. I finally printed out a bunch of like the book covers that I needed to put in there. So we're going to do that. And I guess that's it. Yeah, I will um, read some more of this and talk to you guys in a minute. But first, we're going to say hello to Cassandra. Yes, I will say hi to your vlog. I love your vlog. <laughs> Aw, she loves you guys. I love your vlog. Make sure you subscribe to Katie. Make sure you subscribe to Cassandra. <laughs> Subscribe to Katie. If I had both hands, I would do a little thing. I hope you are doing well. I hope you are reading some really good books. I hope Katie is not boring you. <laughs> okay, that's enough of that. Katie. Damn. I invite you to be on my vlog, and this is what I get? Yeah, don't say hi to my vlog. No. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Yeah. Reading will commence. <laughs> made some progress with six crimson cranes i am currently up to page 312 so i think i have like 150 pages left maybe i wouldn't necessarily say i'm like absolutely loving this book however i have really been having a good time listening to it i guess i should probably say because i do have the audiobook for it i feel like it's a story that lends itself really well to being told like verbally you know like just the way the story flows and the way the plot progresses i'm just really enjoying listening to it on audio so i'm very happy that i do have the audiobook for it aside from that i don't really have many more thoughts on the matter we've kind of been with our main character in the same place for quite a while now so i'm kind of wondering like when she's gonna go and do something it's just like a really easy listen i'm definitely enjoying it i do think it's kind of easy to like kind of see where things are going like certain plot twists i'm like yeah that makes sense this is going well i think i'm going to still attempt to finish it up today i won't have time to finish it up before my friend comes over though because that's in like six minutes so i'm going to try and finish it up later tonight and then tomorrow i'm so excited because i'm going to jump back into a curious beginning by deanna rayborn and i i'm so excited i <laughs> I just really think I'm going to enjoy this book and I'm really excited to read some more of it. One thing I actually forgot about this book is that our main character, she's like, what is that? What's the name of what she does? She like studies butterflies. There's a word for it. I need to figure out what the word for it is. Oh God, I do not know how to pronounce that. L-A-I-P-I. Cetaphil's hydrating foaming lepidopterist. Lepidopterist. There we go. YouTube has helped me out. The amount of times I have to look up those pronunciation videos on YouTube. Too many, honestly, but very helpful. Our main character is a lepidopterist. I've never, like, I've never heard this word before, so saying it sounds really, like, weird. But I think, like, yeah. She studies butterflies. And on the back of this, it's talking about how she's free to resume her world travels in pursuit of scientific inquiry. And the occasional romantic dalliance. And that's giving me major Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies vibes. Since I read that book a couple of weeks ago and I loved it so much. Obviously, like, this book came first, but I read that one first. So, I think because I love that one so much and I love, like, the vibes of that book with, like, our main character, you know, like, studying fairies. But also, like, this little romance aspect to it. I don't think the, uh, the analytical side will be as present in this one because I think it's mainly focused on her, like solving mysteries and whatnot but i like the fact that our main character is very passionate about a subject like i really liked that i liked that in emily wise encyclopedia fairies so i think that'll be fun as well but anyway these are my plans for today and tomorrow hopefully i can finish a curious beginning but if i don't that's cool too i may just like go off the rails and start my reread of clockwork prince so 
who knows? Anyway, I've been having a very productive afternoon while I've been listening to my audiobook for Six Crimson Cranes. I did some laundry, um, which I really needed to do. I repainted my nails, even though I did not do a very good job, but they were chipping before, so anything was, uh, anything looked better than that. And yeah, I think that's, oh no, that's not it. I had one more thing that I wanted to talk about really quickly because I got one of these recommended to me the other day and I just wanted to, to mention it to you guys. If you guys want a good laugh, well, I don't, like, they're not supposed to be funny and I don't know if anybody else will think they're funny, but I, I think they're really funny because YouTube recommended to me the other day the, like, book trailer that Simon & Schuster did how many years ago? 13 years ago for Clockwork Angel <laughs> and it's absolutely like ridiculous and obviously I had to watch the ones for Clockwork Prince and Clockwork Princess and they're just like they're not funny but they are funny <laughs> and like I'm sure if I would have watched them when these books were coming out and I was like you know 10 I would have been like oh my god it looks so cool <laughs> But um, I don't have those feelings now. I think they look rather ridiculous. However, if for some reason you haven't seen them, I want you guys to go watch them. <laughs> I got another one recommended to me earlier today and it was like the, the balcony scene from Clockwork Prince. They did like their own like trailer of sorts for it. And I was like, what is going on? So I just, um, I wanted somebody else to watch them too. I wanted to talk about it because all of the comments on those videos are from like, you know, 10 years ago when these books were actually coming out. So it really just proves that I am indeed late to the party. However, I wanted to bring it up anyway because I thought they were really funny. It just really took me off guard. I don't know what I was expecting when I clicked on the video, but it wasn't that. Also the casting, oh, the casting that they do for the main three characters questionable because like Will and Tessa I'm like yeah fine but they didn't use a Chinese person or like a half Chinese person for gems so I'm like mm, I don't like it disappointed but not surprised anyway not that that really has anything to do with anything but I just remembered that I wanted to bring it up so I did <laughs> anyway I'm actually gonna go now instead of rambling any longer <laughs> Sunday morning at like 8 45. I have been up reading a bit of Six Crimson Cranes and I will give you an update on this later but I'm really close to finishing it. I think I have like 30 pages left or so. So this will certainly be happening and I'm very excited about that and then later I don't know if I'm gonna start A Curious Beginning or The Well of Ascension because Libby always coming through for me, gave me the notification uh, like when I woke up this morning that my audiobook for The Well of Ascension is ready. So I'm like, which one do I start? I still don't know. I'll just have to find out. Anyway, me and my friend are gonna go on a walk this morning. So I'm gonna do that and I'll definitely show you guys a bit of that. It'll be more of that, you know, Midwest winter vibe of just dead trees and other dead things, but um, that'll be nice. Good Sunday morning walk. And then we're gonna go get McDonald's breakfast afterwards, which I'm so excited about. I'm gonna get my Diet Coke. It's gonna be a good day. And then hopefully, we can do some good reading later today. So I just wanted to give you a quick update on things and yeah, let's go for a walk. Okay, so it is later. I went on my walk. It was a very nice walk. 10 out of 10 walk, but I have some exciting stuff because I have book mail. It's kind of heavy. <laughs> so first of all, I do have this package. This is not, like I didn't get this from Illumicrate. I bought this like secondhand, but somebody sent it in an Illumicrate box, but well, I guess technically it is from Illumicrate, but like I'll open it and then I'll explain, you know, like, whatever. <laughs> you get what I mean, but I am so, beyond excited about this mail. This is the exciting book mail that I was talking about and I like I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait to look at these. Oh my god. Boom. Any guesses as to what they are? 
I'm so excited. They're so small and cute. Oh my god. So I've done a bad thing. <laughs> Because I spent some money the other day that I probably should not have spent. However, I've been looking for this set of books for quite a while. And they are always just like so expensive on eBay. Like, very expensive <laughs> on eBay. However, I was looking on Pango Books the other day. And I saw these for just like quite a bit less than I've ever seen them anywhere before. And I was like, alright, yeah, I'm gonna... <laughs> I'm gonna do it and that would be the infernal devices what are these called special editions that illumicrate did i think two years ago maybe but they're so like they're so cute and like small and i just like i love them like obviously i've talked a lot about the infernal devices even in this vlog love it so much so I've been wanting to get my hands on this edition, like set of them for the longest time. And I've been so excited about it. And I'm just, oh, they're so cute. Oh my gosh. They're also like, it's like so small, but I don't know how to, how do I get these out of here? There we go. Oh, I forgot. Oh, how did I forget? Look at these sprayed edges with the, the gears. It's just so good. Oh my god, they're they're so tiny. They're so small. Oh. They even have Cassie's stamp and oh my god. Here's Clockwork Angel. We have Clockwork Prince. Oh, it has the mask from the Masquerade Ball. So good. Absolutely love. And then we also have Clockwork Princess. Does this one have anything on it? What is that? Oh, duh, it's violin. I was like, wait, what is that? It's a violin. Um, that's rude. <laughs> oh my god. Absolutely no words. But I'll, they're, they're so tiny. Like, okay. This is a UK standard hardback, I think. Like, the you know, it's a hardback. And I want to show you just, like, the difference between... Look at it. It's so small. Like, they're gorgeous. I love that they all have different designs on their covers, too. Like, this one we kind of have... Is that, like, Westminster? No. What is this? Is this Westminster? Oh, I was right! Nice. Um, oops. Anyway. <laughs> good, good stuff. I'm so excited. I don't know where I'm gonna put them on my shelf yet, though. Maybe. Can you see that? I have, like, my, um... A good girl's guide to murder books like here ish but i feel like these could fit there that's like my unbelievably exciting piece of book mail but then i have more just like you know normally exciting book mail i'm excited about all of the mail that i get that pertains to books though so we have a, an amazon package and i do believe this is off of my amazon wish list and normally like obviously i don't know what they are but based on the uh the construction of this book and how floppy it feels in the package um i think i have an idea as to what this is and if it's not i'm gonna look like a clown oh, i was right nice oh oh it's so good like i know i talk about the floppy paperbacks every time i talk about stormlight archive but like i'm not look at it it's so good. This is Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson. This is the fourth book in the Stormlight Archive. I love the Stormlight Archive and I had not picked up a copy of Rhythm of War yet. So I put it on my Amazon wish list and some kind person sent it to me who, Porcupine, that's a sick name. <laughs> says, hi Katie, hope you enjoyed the extraordinarily floppy book. <laughs> I'm, you know me so, <laughs> that's so funny that I, um, I, I'm a broken record at this point, apparently, but I'm so excited to have this book. So thank you so much, Porcupine. That is amazing. Amazing book mail this morning. I'm already having a stunning Sunday morning. And yeah, so there's the mail. <laughs> Next up, I have more things to talk about because I did indeed just finish Six Crimson Cranes. I'm thinking it's like a like a 3.75 but i'm gonna round it up to like four on goodreads i really enjoyed this book i thought overall it was just like a really nice read it's not a new favorite and i didn't really feel myself connecting too deeply with any of the characters however i just had like a really good time you know consuming this story i very much enjoyed it i also hadn't realized that on the cover of this book you have like the cranes here but there's also a paper crane 
right there which is like a big part of this book as well and i remember in like i don't know third grade maybe the first time that like i learned about like the if you like fold a thousand paper cranes you can like make a wish or something and i just have vivid memories of like reading a story about that and it was like you know referenced a lot throughout this book but i did not notice the paper crane that was on the cover so that's fun but i just really enjoyed this book like it was pretty good i don't really have like too much to say about it because it really does just read like a, a fairy tale. Also, I'm really excited to pick up The Dragon's Promise. I think that's the second book in this series. One, because I do just want to know what happens, but also I like the cover for that book even more. Like, I guess, like, who allowed, who allowed the covers to be this stunning, honestly? I do feel like the covers also really fit the story. I feel like it's a very, like, whimsical story, and this kind of gives me those vibes, and it was, it was really fun. So, also, there's like a cute little romance kind of situation happening in here, which I always love a good romance in my book. So I was like, all right, get it, girl. I'm I'm happy for her. But yeah, I'm excited to see kind of how that develops in the second book because I feel like there's almost potential for like a love triangle situation almost. So don't know how I feel about that, but I really like that aspect as well. I also really liked her relationship with like her brother. She has like six older brothers i think and that was just nice to read about so it is currently 11 40 on sunday morning i don't have anything to do today so i think i'm just going to i think first of all i'm going to watch a bit of booktube and like grade some homework that i need to grade i am a grader at my university for like a lower level engineering course so i do have some homework that i need to grade but i might like grade that while i watch some booktube and then i think i'm going to yeah, I think I've decided I'm going to start A Curious Beginning by Deanna Rayborn. Should I get it? For visual purposes, I'll grab it. <laughs> Here she is. I'm excited to get into it. I think I'm going to kind of just do like a little... I'm not going to reread the first six chapters, but I'm going to like give it, like get a little refresher. Like maybe skim it a bit. And then I'm going to get back into it. So those are kind of my plans for the day. I don't really have ton of things that I have to do. I don't know if I'm going to really make a ton of progress today before I end the vlog, but we'll have to see. At any rate, I will talk to you guys later. <laughs> to do any reading however i did get all the grading done that i needed to do um however i'm not really in a huge reading mood at the moment like i i don't know i think i'm gonna start listening to the audiobook for clockwork prince just to like do something because i you know it's a reading vlog you gotta do some reading i would totally be down to start my reread of clockwork prince now as opposed to like some other time this month so i'm like yeah sure that'll work so i think i might listen to the audiobook for that a little bit or maybe later i will get the inspiration to start another book i don't know but i have decided that you know i should probably leave my apartment 
at some other point in time today because like I don't really leave my apartment a lot. I go to class. That's basically the only reason I ever leave my apartment. And I don't really have, you know, like a ton of credit hours that I'm taking this semester. So I do go out during the week, but maybe not as much as I should. And I get kind of sad when I just sit in my apartment and like don't do anything <laughs> naturally. So I've decided that maybe I should just like go out and do a little something. It's a nice day out. So I think I'm gonna go pick up uh, like a small bouquet of flowers. I think like five bucks. <laughs> like it's not gonna be very nice, but we're working on a budget here. Something like $5. I'm pretty sure they have like really small, like $5 bouquets at Walmart that I might go scope out. Since Valentine's Day is in a couple of days, I thought, you know, that might be a cute little Valentine's Day present to myself. I might even go get another Diet Coke because that always makes me feel better. So I'm going to do that. Honestly, I have no idea how to arrange flowers, so it could look better. However, it's the thought and the activity that counts. And I really like these flowers. I like the colors of them. They were only $5, so really, uh, can I complain? No. And I like it. I also picked up this vase from Goodwill, and I really like... <laughs> This is random, but I really like this vase. I like the, the clean lines. It's very modern looking because a lot of the vases that I was seeing, they're very like curvy and like, I don't know. I just liked this one more. So good investment, I suppose. But yes, I'm excited to, you know, watch these at least. What kind of flowers are these? Are these carnations maybe? Actually, let's find out. These light pink ones, they are carnations and they symbolize love captivation and distinction so there we go they're pretty and i like them and i thought their colors would be really good for valentine's day so there are my flowers really brighten up the kitchen now i actually have made some decision as to what i'm going to be reading this afternoon because i forgot that i had this book in my car and now that i've remembered i'm thinking like wow that would be perfect because i'm not really feeling like physical reading like normal reading you know like actual books but I haven't, it's been a minute since I read a graphic novel and I forgot that I had Laura Olympus volume one. I mentioned in my 24 hour readathon that I did a while ago that I was, well, I said I was gonna read it in the readathon and I didn't, but I think it's finally time. I feel like right now is a really good time to pick this up and I'm very excited about it also since it's like Hades and Persephone, maybe it'll be good for Valentine's day. Although I don't really know. We'll just have to see. I think there's like some trigger warnings for this series, but I'm not exactly sure what they are and I don't know if they happen in this first volume. So, oh yes. It regularly deals with themes of physical and mental abuse, sexual trauma and toxic relationships. So if you are thinking about picking up this series, maybe keep that in mind. Got my Diet Coke. It is delicious, like this Diet Coke is really good. I'm glad I found some good reading plans for the afternoon and I'm gonna get into it.
Okay, so it's a bit later and I have finally finished Lore Olympus Volume 1. I really enjoyed this book. Like, I didn't think I was not going to enjoy it, but I didn't think I would enjoy it quite as much as I did. Because when I originally started reading the webtoon a few years ago, I wasn't really that into it. But in this form, I was like, okay, yeah, I'm very much enjoying this. I really like the art style of this as well. I feel like I tend to gravitate more towards like a messier kind of art style. And I feel like that's kind of the vibe of this graphic novel. And also all of like the gods and goddesses and I don't know, like nymphs or whatever they are. They each have like a signature color, which I just think is like a cool concept. So I like overall aesthetic wise, very into it. I also really like the story. It's definitely in the beginning stages, like with Hades and Persephone, very like basic groundwork is being laid. And I'm very excited to see how their relationship develops, but also I just really enjoy the story overall. Also, <laughs> I just thought it was really funny. Like there were multiple instances where I was laughing out loud at some of the things that were in this graphic novel, which is always a good sign. But also it was like quite the dichotomy because there are some serious things happening in this graphic novel. So obviously pay heed to the trigger warnings that I listed out earlier, but I thought it was a good balance and I'm excited to see how the rest of them go because we'll absolutely be picking up more volumes of this as soon as I can. Anyway, it is currently six o'clock. I got the best email <laughs> like an hour ago from one of my professors. He cannot come to class like for the next three days and I have him for two classes. So instead of having to be on campus tomorrow at 9 a.m., I don't have to be there until 1 p.m. And I only have one class tomorrow. So this is fantastic. But I have decided on some, some reading plans, finally. I feel like I've been up and down today with like what I want to read and if I want to read, but um, I feel like Lore Olympus, it got me like in the reading mood. Like that's what I love graphic novels for. Like if I'm not fully wanting to pick up a book, I feel like I can pick up a graphic novel and if I'm into it, I'm like, yeah, let's read some more. You know what I'm saying? So I think I'm going to finally start, instead of just talking about it, I'm going to start A Curious Beginning, which I'm very, very much excited for. So I don't know if I'll have an update for you guys like tonight or tomorrow probably tomorrow if I had to take a guess. So I'm gonna read some of this and I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Oh yes, because I was gonna say this, because I decided I'm going to extend this vlog into tomorrow since I have all of this free time now. So it'll be great. We're gonna do some reading. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so it is Monday morning. Actually, it's very close to being Monday afternoon. It's 11.56 now and I have class at one. So I kind of need to go to that, but just the one class for today. I'm still so excited. My classes got canceled. I've just been like chilling this morning. I watched Cass's new vlog, which is always a good time. I started editing this vlog, which is definitely very productive. And I started studying for my quiz that I have on Wednesday. So I think I just need to never have classes in the morning on Monday. Cause I'm just like, yes, start of the week, ready to get my stuff in order. I went to McDonald's, I got a Diet Coke. It's been, it's been a good morning so far, even though I almost dropped this. I also have quite an update for you. On a curious beginning, I am up to page 187 now. So I think I'm like a little bit over halfway through the book. And honestly, I'm loving this book so much. And it really is all because of these two main characters. Like their banter back and forth is so incredibly, like entertaining and they're both very like blunt people. 
so like so many scathing remarks towards each other so many like vexing situations for them he called her an insufferable woman and i was like oh they're in love but like seriously their banter back and forth is like it's so quippy it's so like quick-witted and i love it so much like just i could watch them just like snap at each other for like 300 pages which is essentially what this book is and i'm really enjoying it there's definitely a bit of a mystery aspect to it obviously because it's um like that's the point of the series they solve mysteries together which i'm excited to see other mysteries because i know they go like different places in the world right now they're just in england yes and i'm so excited to see how this slow burn romance develops over the course of the series considering there are like seven books i have a feeling it's gonna be a slow burn and i'm excited for that kind of i probably won't be saying that like once i get you know later in the series and i'm like come on give me something but for now i'm like yeah i'm definitely thinking it's gonna be a four or five star i'm definitely leaning towards a five star at the moment just because i'm having such a good time i think i will just end the vlog whenever i finish this book so i can give you like my final thoughts on it in this vlog because i think it's getting to be a bit long but what's new anyway i'm gonna stop um blathering on because i do need to go to class those are my plans for today i do need to study for my quiz on wednesday but i also need to finish this book so We'll just see where my priorities land. Okay, so it is a few days later. I naturally forgot to end the vlog. I don't know why I just can't remember to film like the last clip for like any of my weekend reading vlogs, but it's fine because we're doing it now and everything's okay. So first of all, I did indeed finish A Curious Beginning by Deanna Rayborn. Honestly, I think I'm just gonna give this book a five stars. Like. I didn't completely love the mystery in this one, however, it definitely feels like a very beginner kind of like an intro mystery almost, if you will, that kind of like pertains to the characters almost, but I think it's going to, um, there's going to be different ones, I think, like later in the series. So hopefully those will be a bit more interesting, but like overall, I loved my time reading this book so much. So I just like, yeah, sure. Five stars. I loved it so much. I've already talked about how much I love the characters, but like I seriously do. Veronica, I just, I love her attitude towards things because even though it's the 1880s and there are a lot of societal limits put upon women in that time, she's just like, I don't care. <laughs> I'm gonna do what I want, when I want, and I love her for that. So very strong female character for sure. I love her personality because she's just like a very blunt person, but like everything she says is still like really funny. And I, I love her as a main character. I have done a thing <laughs> because I was on a book buying ban um, indefinitely, honestly, because I spent way too much money on those editions of the infernal devices like totally worth it but like i shouldn't have spent that much money on books this month and i was on an indefinite book buying ban but i've decided that i'm kind of going to alter that to be like if i'm continuing a series that i like love i will like buy the the subsequent books in this series because who am i to deprive myself of reading the second book in the series as soon as i can you know what I'm saying? So I already bought a copy of it. I think it's coming tomorrow, maybe, and I'm gonna read it this weekend, which I'm so excited about. Also, I wanted to bring up this scene that further cements in my mind that this is indeed like the adult version of Stalking Jack the Ripper. More so in just like the, uh, you know, two people with a slow burn romance solving mysteries kind of thing. However, there's this one scene in this book. I will not give any context for it, even though context would be helpful because it's just like so random. Um, I definitely thought it was very random going in with what I thought I knew about this book. But there's this scene where our two main characters are like, they're doing this knife throwing bit for like a I don't know, circus of sorts, which it was just like so, that was a, that was a plot line. Like Stoker, who's like the main guy in this book, he's like throwing knives at like the spinning wheel, which our main character Veronica was on. You know what I'm saying? There is exactly a scene like that in the third Stalking Jack the Ripper book, I think. What is that called? Escaping from Houdini. There is a, like the exact scene, you know what I'm saying? Where Thomas Cresswell is throwing knives at Audrey, like those are the main characters of that book, while she's on the like spinning wheel. I don't, I don't think it's actually spinning, but you know, I was like the parallels 
the parallels i was having major deja vu but anyway those are kind of my final thoughts on this book i'm so excited to start the next one it's gonna be so good let's get a quick wrap up on all of the books that i managed to read this weekend which is all four of these which i'm so excited about because i did some good reading and yeah so read this one just talked about it good yes <laughs> And then I also finished Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. I think I'm going to give this one, it's like a 3.5. I feel like a 3.75 is definitely generous. Um, I don't dislike it. And there are a lot of aspects to it that I did enjoy, but I don't really have like much to say about it. It was good, but it's just like not a new favorite book or anything. So def like a 3.5 is still good. It just, I don't think it's quite... I don't know, I'll probably like round it up to a four, but like 3.5. It was definitely still enjoyable, and I will say it again, I want to see this turned into a Ghibli movie. Like that would be, it'd be perfect. <laughs> I also finished Lore Olympus Volume 1. I really enjoyed this like so much. I've already put, I think the second, third, and fourth volumes on hold at my library, which I also plan on reading another one of these volumes this weekend, which I'm so excited about because honestly, like, I just enjoyed this so much. Like, there are very few graphic novel series where I'm just like, yeah, love them so much, icons. And that's what she deserves. <laughs> and then finally, we have my reread of Clockwork Angel. Obviously, every time I do a reread of The Infernal Devices, I always have the best time. I think I listened to half a chapter of Clockwork Prince, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue my reread throughout the week and whatnot. You'll see me talk about it eventually as if you haven't heard me talk about this series enough but i did read this and it was very fun so i really hope you guys enjoyed this vlog as well i do think it's turning out to be rather long so um hope you guys liked it if you did please do let me know down below if you've read any of the books that i have read in this vlog if not as always, just tell me what you guys are reading. Also, thank you so much again to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. If you guys also want to check them out, you can go to nordvpn.com slash reading to get the exclusive offer. And yeah, I think that is everything. I'm gonna let you guys go. I really hope you're having a good day or whenever you are watching this video. And I will see you in my next one.